what is good guys sunday fun day sunday and a late one at that again too so 9 p.m and the gym closes at 10 tonight because it's the the weekend so usually it closes at 11 but weekends it's 10 uh, which means i've got barely any time to get this session done but it's a quad session there's only three exercises and um what is it eight sets in total so uh, shouldn't take more than an hour if it is and if it does then i've got bigger problems to worry about than the, the earlier closing time that's for sure but uh yeah just warmed up i did a couple of warm sets on this uh, now i'll be doing my three working sets of adductors um just using the full stack and uh 12 to 20 reps uh, i'm almost hitting 20 for uh for my working sets but still not quite there so still room for progression at the full stack once I do max it out and once it becomes sub-maximal, like once I'm doing, say, three sets of 20 at the full stack, then I'll look at potentially uh, increasing the rep range or adding in pauses to intensify the, the uh, exercise and make it more challenging. And um, just one of those adjustments alone will allow me to have a extended runway for progression on uh, this machine, even though I've actually maxed out the weight, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's the plan of action, just aim to uh, get as many reps as possible on these three sets and then into leg extensions after that. Oh. Make sure my nuts aren't in the way. Oh. Oh, yeah. They're in the way. There we go. Not a bad start to this session. Not a bad start at all. A one rep PB. So 20 on that, and I think last week it was 19 for the first set. I have to check my phone, but I'm pretty, pretty certain. So that means if I just match my uh, my output on the next two sets to basically align with last week's performance, then I'm in a net like uh, improvement. I guess you could say on this on this exercise. I, I'm in a, um, a, a step ahead, uh, one step ahead of last week, or one rep ahead of last week. So yeah, um, that's what I aim for. If I can do more, I will, but I'm obviously not gonna like go balls to the absolute fucking walls and just like snap my shit up to, to get an extra rep on set two and set three. Um, I've already hit a PB, uh, and that's gonna be enough stimulus given that I kept the technique pretty consistent with last week. Uh, so as long as I match the performance or my output on the final two sets, that will have yielded enough stimulus for uh, driving that muscle growth, which is what we want. Yeah, um, don't know how the, the power squats are going to go tonight. I feel pretty fucked. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, today, Sunday, we, we slept in. I had the podcast last night, so I got to bed about half two in the morning. Woke up at nine which isn't like me at all. Uh, usually I'm up the same time every morning, but lately with like the weekend and the podcast, I've been doing that, which I don't mind. It's just uh, your body is thrown off from it because your body gets used to a certain wake up time. Like the whole catch up on sleep concept is completely bullshit. You can't catch up on sleep. Like if you miss out on sleep during the week, you can't catch up on the weekends. And similarly, if you uh, miss out on sleep prior to midnight, so like 
uh, if you miss out on, say, an extra two hours of sleep before midnight, getting an extra two hours of sleep after midnight isn't really going to cut it. Um, because sleep that you do get before midnight comes around is far more um, conducive for recovery, let's just put it that way. Uh, you're going to recover a lot more effectively. And, um, yeah, if you try and move that window forward and make up for lost time by getting extra hours by sleeping in, uh, it just doesn't work. The circadian rhythm just doesn't really allow it. Um, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, it's still better than not getting those extra couple of hours, but it's not going to make up for hours that you missed before midnight. You're better off going to bed early. But because um, the, the podcast is probably likely going to be a regular thing, which I'm stoked about. I, I love chatting to the guys. They're awesome. Um, it just means obviously you have to accept uh, and take uh, that, that kind of like... Um, factor into consideration that I'm, I'm not going to get the best sleep on uh, Saturday nights um, but yeah woke up late uh, started the day late we went to the uh, shopping mall there's a really cool shopping mall not far from here um, so yeah, we, we checked that out it's called Icon uh, CM and uh, it's massive like absolutely massive uh, if you followed me on Instagram uh, you would have seen the stories I posted but they've got like a, a floating restaurant inside on the bottom level uh, it's like several levels high they've got a a Starbucks that pretty much takes up the entire top level. Um, then it opens up out to a balcony at the top of the high rise, so you can like overlook the city. It's pretty cool. Uh, not gonna lie, an inside water fountain. Um, it kind of just like drips from the ceiling in a, a circular shape. It's just mad. Like it just it puts it puts most shopping malls in like Western countries to shame. To be completely fair, um, next level. But um, yeah, we check that out. I uh, did a little bit of shopping. I grabbed some compression tights because I want to start wearing them for the leg days just to help with recovery. There is a bit of a negative, like when you wear compression tights and you train legs, not a lot of people know this, it will slightly diminish the muscle growth effects of training because you're enhancing the recovery process by reducing the, I suppose, the amount of um, damage that occurs. And obviously muscle damage and, and stress on the tissue being a, a precursor to, to muscle growth, you do kind of blunten the, the hypertrophic effects of training to a degree. But like when you're on exogenous hormones, when you're in a surplus, when you're training hard and all those other variables are in your favor, it's like how much does that really like come into effect? It's kind of like the ice bath argument. People say, oh, I don't have ice baths. It's bad for hypertrophy. But if you look at it this way, it's like it's probably the equivalent to rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Like it's not really going to have a, 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 a noticeable impact on, on muscle growth or retarding muscle growth. If you want to have an ice bath to help with recovery and you're trying to build muscle, have a fucking ice bath. Don't be an idiot. Same thing with compression diets. If you want to wear compression diets to improve blood flow, help improve recovery between sets, just wear them. So I, I grabbed a, a pair today and I'm going to start wearing them um, next, next week. So you'll probably see them in next week's uh, leg training videos. Um, but yeah, uh, just a, 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 fuck, I can't speak, a blue pair of uh, skins. So yeah, full leg, full length legging skins. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully that'll just help with leg recovery because when I send it on legs, I do get a bit of information, like more so than uh, I suppose a typical lifter. So yeah, um, enough rambling though. That was way too fucking long of a rest period, especially given that the gym shuts in 50 minutes. So time for... Set number two. Oh. oh, God.
Good set. Another, fuck, knocked my shaker bottle over. <laughs> Another 20 reps. Third and final set in a minute. But before I do, I just wanted to, I'm gonna just hold this here. I just wanted to um, make a, a bit of a point about volume escalation and training. Like static volume totals doesn't necessarily mean that you're not progressing. Uh, it's something that I really wanted to point out too because I've just made the point of like, oh, I'm trying to match what I did last week or beat it. Um, look, at the end of the day, like if your sets, your working sets aren't increasing, like if your volume isn't increasing week to week, every week, if the weight on the bar or the exercise that you're doing isn't increasing every week, if the reps aren't increasing every week, it doesn't mean that you're not building muscle. If you're going close enough to that point of failure, like within that proximity of failure, that Goldilocks zone of like zero to three reps in reserve, like even if you are doing the same number of reps, the same weight for the same number of working sets three weeks in a row, if every single one of those weeks you're falling within that kind of like Goldilocks zone, you're still stimulating the, the tissue and inducing muscle growth. Like you're still gonna induce muscle hypertrophy. Like it's not, uh, you have to progress every week or else you're not gonna build muscle. That's a load of bullshit. But in a perfect world, ideal scenario, you wanna see that linear like escalation or linear progression in volume, whether that be through increasing the weight over time, increasing the reps, improving the technical proficiency, like the tempo by slowing it down, controlling it, getting more time under tension per repetition at the same number of reps with the same number uh, of sets at the same weight, um, or increasing the number of working sets. So whenever you increase a variable, whether it's working sets, weight, repetitions per set, or even the time under tension in the actual reps that you've already done by just slowing the tempo down, you're progressively overloading. They're all methods of progressively overloading your training. So you don't have to be doing more reps. You don't have to be increasing the weight. If you're doing one of those things every now and then over time, and if all of your sets, are, like I said, in that Goldilocks zone, you're sweet. But now time to do set number three. Let's get us back on here. Cool. Because, yeah, um, one more thing to add to that. The reason why I say all of that is for three weeks in a row, doing the same number of reps at the same way might be hard enough and challenging enough to keep you in that Goldilocks zone. Like, you might not need to increase the weight. But if it's getting too easy, then obviously increase the weight or obviously increase the number of reps that you're doing with that weight in that working set. And, uh, yeah, you'll be sweet. Time for leg extensions. Now, if you've been watching the last few quad sessions, or the last quad session, because I only split it up, yeah, a week ago, um, probably thinking, why the hell are you using a different leg extension? Uh, one. The other one seems to be broken. Uh, whoever used it between when I last used it, or, yeah, when I last used it and when I used it, the time before that um, somebody's 
fucked it up somehow. The seat, the adjustable seat, goes all the way down and you can't adjust it to go back up. And when it's all the way down, it's just not set right for me. So I'm going to be switching to Old Faithful, the Nautilus Nitro leg extension. And if anybody who's watching this doesn't know, anybody who's been living under a fucking rock, uh, Nautilus is one of the best brands of bodybuilding equipment, bodybuilding uh, gym equipment that you will ever find. Um, the, the force profiles, the overall design of the machines, just second to none. So, um, yeah, I don't know what weight is suitable or appropriate on this because even if I use the same weight, like, as I did on that one over there, the uh, Flex Fitness leg extension, like, it's not a complete, uh, like, it's not completely relative. Like, the 43 kilo, for example, on this first start, isn't gonna necessarily feel the same. Like it might. The chances are very, very slim. Because machines design wise are built slightly different from brand to brand. Um, even sometimes when a brand does a reiteration of their like piece of equipment, like when they do a revised design, they change it just slightly but it's enough to actually change the, the force profile of it. So for example, the old hammer strength equipment, if you do like two plates per side on some of the old hammer strength plate loaded machines and you try to do the same on the new ones you'll probably notice that it's a lot easier on the new ones um, and that's because in those iterations those revised um, like designs of that that model of equipment it's changed enough to a point that it's just completely it's almost like a new exercise um, so yeah but brand to brand different brands definitely very rare that 45 kilo or 43 kilo will feel like 43 kilo on another one. So I'll try a weight if it's suitable. I'll roll with it. If not, I'll bump it up and I'll treat this set as a, a warm up set. But uh, is it uh, I believe three rest pause sets of 25. So put the seat back. Enough to the point to which I can uh, I can basically get the, the crease of my hip in the the far like corner of the seat where the seat and the back pad meet and then have my the under thigh fully supported by the pad and have my knees most importantly in alignment with the pivot of the machine. So where that pivot is, that's where you want the knee joint to be in alignment with. If it's not, then you need to adjust the machine either. Slide you your bum forward a little bit, get more hip extension, um, so they're in alignment, or move the seat, the back support up a bit, so it pushes your knees forward in alignment with that, that bolt, essentially, or that, um, yeah, that, that bolt, I guess you could call it. <laughs> All right. Because I've been rambling a lot, I'm just going to speed up the uh, rest intervals between these two remaining sets so I can get onto uh, the main movement of the session, the squatting movement, and have the most amount of time to rest between sets on that. Because I feel like that's the exercise that's going to require the, the most amount of rest, or at least a buffer 
uh, and have that, that potential uh, rest at my disposal uh, because it is obviously the more um, homeostatically disruptive movement out of the session. Like adductions and uh, leg extensions are not really that um, taxing, like they don't cause a lot of raw stimulus magnitude, but a squatting pattern does. So yeah, logic would dictate if I'm not a dumb fuck, I'll try preserve as much of the time, the allotted time I have to do my training session for that movement out of the three. All right, set number two. Now raining, god damn it. I have to walk home. <laughs> Looks like I walk home in the rain. But uh probably be nice once I'm done with this session. Probably be, be a little treat. Let's quickly log that before I forget it. Wait, 43. Yeah, 43 kilo. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you train properly and you don't train like a fuckwit. You'd be surprised at how little weight you require on some exercises. Oh. 30 seconds later, set number three. <laughs> well, not quite 30 seconds, probably closer to a minute. So relatively decent rest, even though I'm shortening them a little bit. Relatively decent for leg extensions. Not for something like a squat though. Jeez, you'd want to rest at least two minutes between a set of squats, um, preferably closer to three, if you actually care about your your output on the set that follows. So onto the final exercise now, the uh, power squat. Now, I recently swapped out the movement that was in here before for this, which was obviously the hack squat on the second leg day. I swapped the hack squat out because I just found this was a little bit more comfortable uh, and I got a better stimulus to fatigue uh, profile with this, this lift as opposed to the hack squat. Um, the beauty of this too is with the power squat machine, you can load it in two different uh, pin locations. So I'm loading it on the bottom pin. So you've got a bottom pin either side and a top pin. If you load it on the top pins, it's gonna put the 
or shift the, um, the load more towards the glutes, the hips. And if you want to load the quads up more, um, you put them on the bottom pins. So I'm loading up on the bottom pins, obviously naturally being a quad day, just to really hammer the hell out of them. And um, that'll just really load the movement up in that bottom position, that where you're in that fully stretched position, really hammering the quads. And then um, as, you, as you come up, the, the load kind of gets a little bit more bearable, if that makes sense. So it's heaviest as you descend and uh, lighter as you ascend. So um, yeah, I've got two sets of this, but I don't know if I'll get two done because the gym closes in a few minutes. So I'm gonna at least get one set out and you'll see me do that. Put the uh, belt on. That doesn't do anything other than look cool. But like I said, when you pay $400 for a belt, you gotta use it, even if it doesn't really do anything. I still haven't caught my breath, but I want to get this set in before the gym closes. Now, you're probably thinking if you watch that set and you're like, man, why is he doing the same weight? That was fast. Yeah, although it was fast, if you pay close attention to the reps, they weren't very standardized. I mean, I couldn't make my mind up between doing continuous reps or like pausing between every few reps. And uh, when I did those pauses, it allowed me to like recover like partially. And uh, that allowed me to extend the set while staying further away from failure as if I were to just do continuous reps. So to make this more challenging, I wanna make sure that I do continuous reps until I absolutely need to do rest pauses. Um, I'm still gonna, shoot, still gonna shoot for 20 reps again, but as many of those reps continuous as possible, which means no pausing at the top after I lock out each rep. It means as soon as I get to the top, slowly going back down. As soon as I get to the bottom, slowly going back up or, or just going back up at a normal speed. And what that should result in is me getting closer to failure sooner than I did on that set. Not just because of the fatigue that I would have accumulated from that set, but also because I'm not having those momentary breaks at the top of each rep before I begin the next rep. Ugh. <sighs> 
Same weight, shitload harder. Home time. Oh, what are you doing?